Well hello boys and girls, welcome to this con review. Scavenging an evolution of the open world survival game that offers unpredicted levels of character customization, control and progression, where knowledge and skills are the ultimate weapon for long term survival. Survival games regularly ask for deep, complexity, immersion, stunning visual, realistic survival and mechanics. And when scam comes along faking all those boxes, the players abandon it must be it has not the gang the first murder hobo simulator they actually want. On the flip side, that side launched as the murder hobo simulator, the same group flew to it, only to leave it. Message from upon finding out was a deep and immersive survival experience they hoping for. Despite being exhausted with all their type of experience, come is fantastic. It's still very much an early excess, that little with gameplay is polished, bugs are few and far between the, and there is solid foundation that it will be only get better. Gameplay wise, the basics are the same as the open world survival on the market. Loot and craft your way from zero to hero. The lore and background on the other hand is rather unique. Everyone is a prisoner, thrown into the arena as a punishment. Drones fly around and film the prisoners as some sort of sadistic television program for people on the outside. Currently all the drones do is film you and while you make your soul yourself in fright, but the developers have hinted at an ominous purpose in the future. Aside from the reality TV guess of things, the goal is to survive and right now. There is no really an end game. PvP is enabled so the other players can be a serious treat. However, if you are a fairly unpopular server, the bigger worries come in the form of zombies. They can be found near every place of interest, whenever it's a farmhouse, seaside, village or military compound. They are not particularly tricky to take down through and the simplistic melee combat system means a quick swing with your melee weapon of choice of your fist followed by a step to avoid the counter attacks should see you winning a war of undead attrition. The other major threat comes is from enormous mech that patrol military compounds, and the ground barkers and the hottest spot on the map, the airfield. They shoot on sight, can spot you from a quite a distance and no matter what you're packing you will be dropped in a burst of gunfire. Of course they defend the arrays with the best loot, so if you want to gear up you're going to need to evade those robotic beasts. You don't think trying to their game down, even a few days since the game launch only group has managed to take one out. If it required going into a private server and finding with the settings to reduce their damage to zero, followed by 15 of these community members shooting in non-stop. Taking out those goldest machines, killing machines isn't feasible for the most players. While the game has crafting mechanics, they're not quite as central to the experience as you may think. From the get you go, going to one find two stones on the ground so you can create a stone knife, followed by chopping up a bush so you can carry an immersive wooden spear. This luxury is where the majority of crafting comes in. Crafting makeshift versions of the tools you don't have yet. You'll always be able to find better versions of your stuff inside buildings and compounds, so while it seems intimidating, don't spend too much time pondering what you need to take. Hold yourself to the nearest place of interest instead and hope you don't run into any mechs. Crafting is very much needed when it becomes a cooking food truth. you find a variety of fruit and vegetables in the world in buildings you might stumble upon some crisp like chocolate bar, but they don't think compared to roasting multiple screws of human flesh, as grim as sounds becoming a cannibal in the best way to stay satisfied. For the zombie will kill you, there is multiple limbs you can chop up, but on a square and roast over an open fire. Various animals like a deer, pigs and horses roam the wild but they since flee from you and zombies eagerly run toward you, one is the far easiest to harvest than the other. Characters don't persist across service with the means you can have a lot of different sieve files, so to speak on go to any one time. Each character you create has their own fame ranking, which is essentially a point system. The better you perform finding gear, crafting tools and killing zombies, the more fame points you earn. If near the system, since the fame can be spent on reviving your character, if you die, you want to respawn next squad mate. It costs you 100 FP. Not bother about your other start, you only have to part with 25 FP. If you are tired of the survival aspect, you can spend your hard earned FP on entertaining that matches games too. We haven't seen any rewards for winning yet, but they offer a great way to get used to the gun mechanics. Bringing up your event we will show a few tops across the top on which show the metabolism. It seems overwhelming at first, but there is not much worry about the here. 
pay attention to the sickness on the BCU monitor as tells you whatever you need to head up with the bagageal pills. On the right hand side try to keep all your nutritional values in the green but no one of it actually matters too much. If your health isn't thinking down and you are regularly eating and drinking you got nothing to worry about. It's impossible to minimize your character by eating a mixed diet but it's not something we got on the bottom of yet. Scum could well be next big thing, it's immersed grew on on Twitch and social media and channels in a few days since it launched for a good reason. I will leave all the links in the description, peace. And don't forget to subscribe.